In this video, we will cover motion in two dimensions. In each of the following three examples, we will be applying the formula F equals MA. And in each of these three examples, the F and A are going to be vectors in two dimensions. The first example. A resultant force of 3i plus 8j newtons acts upon a particle of mass 0.5 kilograms. A. Find the acceleration of the particle in the form pi plus qj meter per second squared. And for part b, find the magnitude and bearing of the acceleration of the particle. We can start by writing out the formula f equals ma. Substituting the values of f and m, we will have 3i plus 8j equals 0.5 times a. Dividing both sides by 0.5 will give us the value of a. To solve part b, we can start by drawing out a right angle triangle. The resultant force is the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is given by the 6i plus 16j. 6i represents the x direction and 16j represents the y direction. The magnitude is given by the length of the hypotenuse. And we represent this as a within a modulus sign. Using Pythagoras' theorem, we will have square root of 6 squared plus 16 squared is equal to 2 square root of 73, giving our answer to one decimal place will be 17.1 meter per second squared. To represent the bearing of the acceleration, we start by drawing out the north line, and we measure the bearing from the north line clockwise. The north line with the x direction will form a 90 degree angle we can work at the angle theta and then subtract it from 90 degrees. Or, if we want to get the answer straight away, we can use our knowledge of alternate angles being equal. If we label the angle of the bearing as being the theta, then the alternate angle will be the top angle of the triangle. To work at this angle, we can use the 10 opposite over adjacent. So we will have 10 theta is equal to 6 over 16. Theta is equal to inverse of 10, 6 over 16, which is 20.6 degrees to one decimal place. Writing out our conclusion, we have to make sure that we are going to use free figure bearing before the decimal point. Next example. Forces F1, F2 and F3 act on a particle of mass 3 kilograms. Find the acceleration of the particle. We can first calculate the resultant force by adding up these vectors. Simplifying will be 3i plus 3j. Then writing out our formula f equals ma, replacing f, which is 3i plus 3j, equals replacing the m, which is 3 kilograms, so that's 3, and then times by a. Dividing both sides by 3, we will have a is equal to i plus j meter per second squared. And final example. A boat is modelled as a particle of mass 60 kg being acted on by three forces. F1 is 80-50, F2 is 10p-20q and F3 is minus 75-100. We can notice here that the F2 has two unknowns, the p and q. Given that the boat is accelerating at the rate of 0.8 and minus 1.5, find the values of p and q. In this example, instead of using i and j to represent the x direction and the y direction, we are using column vectors, which is pretty much representing the same thing. We can start by calculating the resultant force by adding f1, f2 and f3, then simplify it. Adding the x values, we will have 80 plus 10p plus minus 75. Simplifying this is equal to 5 plus 10p. Adding the y values, we will have 50 plus 20q plus 100. Simplifying this, we will have 150 plus 20q newtons. Writing out our formula F equals ma. Replacing the F, we will have 5 plus 10p, 150 plus 20q equals. Replacing the M, we will have 60 times. And replacing the A, we will have 0 0.8 minus 1.5. Simplifying the right hand side will be 48 minus 90. Writing out an equation for the x direction will give us 5 plus 10p is equal to 48. Solving it for p is equal to 4.3. Writing out an equation for the y direction, we will have 150 plus 20q is equal to minus 90. Solving it for q is equal to minus 12. And these are the two values that were required. 